Back in February, The Intercept published a really insightful piece by Ryan Grimm, which I'm sure you all have read by now, where he talks about how the top aide to Nancy Pelosi, a gentleman named Wendell Primus, assured health industry executives from Blue Cross Blue Shield behind closed doors that they have nothing to worry about when it comes to Medicare for All, because presumably... They're going to stop that momentum before it really starts to take hold. And there's already a lot of momentum, but just the fact that they would be presumably conspiring to crush this movement behind closed doors, the fact that the highest ranking Democrats top aide would be in cahoots with health industry executives, it was completely outrageous and people were mad about this and rightfully so. But thankfully, someone who's a true advocate for Medicare for All is on our side and decided to confront Wendell about him assuring Blue Cross Blue Shield executives that they don't have to worry about Medicare for All. Because in reality, they do. The momentum that you see for this, it's not going to die down because we've never had this much momentum, I don't think, for Medicare for All. So if we stop now, we would be morons. So we're not going to do that. And I think Pramila Jayapal knows that. Now, for those of you who don't know, Pramila Jayapal is the new co-sponsor or the new sponsor, rather, of the House's Medicare for All Act. And it is absolutely phenomenal. I had my doubts at first because it seemed like she was being relatively standoffish and she was drafting it behind closed doors and didn't want to allow advocates a lot of input but that all changed she listened to people and it's a really phenomenal bill it's incredibly strong and what i like is that bernie sanders has i believe pledged to reintroduce his version in the senate that matches her bill so i love her bill i love that she's an advocate she really did prove herself and now she's proving herself yet again because she reportedly confronted wendell primus and basically told him why would you tell health industry executives that they don't have to worry about Medicare for all? What's your goal here? Are you trying to undermine this movement? So as Adam Cancrin of Politico reports, Congressional Progressive Caucus co-chair Pramila Jayapal on Tuesday confronted a top aide to Speaker Nancy Pelosi expressing frustration over his private dismissals of Medicare for All legislation. Jayapal, a lead author of the plan H.R. 1384, told Wendell Primus, who serves as Pelosi's senior health policy advisor, that she did not appreciate what she perceived as his efforts to undermine lawmakers' bills. Jayapal pressed him to explain reports that he made disdainful remarks about the proposal in separate meetings with health policy researchers and insurance executives. I made it clear that I was not happy, Jayapal said, following a previously scheduled caucus meeting with Primus. I think it's really inappropriate for staff representing the Speaker's office to be under cutting members of our caucus. During the meeting, Primus told progressive members that his remarks were mischaracterized and that Medicare for All was just a small part of his November discussion with health policy groups, according to Jayapal. He did not apologize, multiple congressional progressive caucus members told Politico, though no apology was explicitly sought. I would say it was pretty unapologetic, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez said of Primus's response during the closed-door session. I think it's concerning. Primus was present on other topics, including drug pricing, during the meeting. But Jayapal specifically challenged Primus over Medicare for All, pointing to copies of slides that he presented to Blue Cross Blue Shield executives laying out concerns with single-payer health care. I wasn't particularly convinced by his answers, Jayapal said. We took some things out of the slides and said, these are some of the things you said. It's not a matter of perception. So not only is this brave, but I think what she's doing is savvy because she's using his own words against him because of course, if you were going to confront him, he just squirm and try to uh, deflect because this was a meeting that took place behind closed doors. We only heard about secondhand accounts, so nobody was there who took issue with this, right? But what she did was she took out the slides that he presented and used his own words against him, and that is absolutely brilliant. So do I believe him? Absolutely not. And it seems like members of the Congressional Progressive Caucus don't believe him as well. He's unapologetic and clearly he's trying to undermine our efforts. I'm glad that they confronted him about this. But the problem is Nancy Pelosi has got to get rid of this guy. You can't have this guy as your top aide. Either demote him or fire him because someone who is in cahoots colluding with health industry executives to undermine our fight for Medicare for All, that is corruption. That obviously poses a conflict of interest. 
It's overtly corrupt. There may be no quid pro quo, but obviously what you're doing here poses a conflict of interest. And I can't see how this isn't a national scandal. Now, the one thing that kind of bothered me about this is that Pramila Jayapal, she made it clear that her argument isn't necessarily about Nancy Pelosi and her criticism of Nancy Pelosi's aide, William Primus, in no way should determine how she feels about Nancy Pelosi. I'm paraphrasing, but for the most part, that was the sentiment. And look, you've got to hammer Nancy Pelosi. She is a conservative. She's conservative. On this issue, if you are going to be to the right of the UK's prime minister, who's in the conservative party on the issue of healthcare, you're no progressive you're just flat out conservative. Now, if you want to say she's a progressive in other areas, that she was great when it comes to LGBTQ rights 100 years ago, great. But on this issue, she's conservative and she's part of the problem too. Hate to break it to you, but she is. So I'm glad that Pramila Jayapal and really other members of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, they have the courage to confront Nancy Pelosi's top aide, because you've got to understand that this could lead to unintended consequences. He could complain to Nancy Pelosi about the progressives getting too rowdy, and then she could choose to penalize them in some way. Now, would she go as far as to strip them of their committee assignments? I don't think she'd go that far, but there are other ways that she could marginalize them and really undermine their agenda, and she could basically stop this Medicare for All debate in its tracks. I mean, we're finally getting hearings for Medicare for All, and that was one of her concessions, as if that's well, such a big concession. But I mean, nonetheless, she can still do things to make their lives miserable. So it is really brave that they're kind of putting their necks on the line here and saying, look, the fact that you did this, the fact that you assured Blue Cross Blue Shield executives that you're going to stop Medicare for All Maybe not in those exact words, but you're kind of giving them the wink and the nod that that's what you will do. It's downright morally reprehensible because these are companies that profit off of ripping off people. They don't care about delivery of health care. They care about delivery of profits to their pockets. They care about their wallets. So that's why we need Medicare for all. Because if health care is free at the point of service, then... We're more concerned with health care itself as a goal, not profits. And this is what these health insurance companies do. So for any candidate who is hedging on whether or not we should get rid of these health insurance companies, understand something. They're not serious about Medicare for all. It's why Bernie Sanders is the only candidate who is serious about Medicare for all. No other candidate in the 2020 race is as serious about it as Bernie Sanders. You can say that I'm being unfair, but facts are facts. And until other candidates start unequivocally calling for these health insurance companies to go away, I'm not going to take them seriously. Because if you want Medicare for all, then obviously the goal is to get these health insurance companies to go out of business. That's the goal. You're not going to explicitly ban them via legislation. You're not going to codify a law that says health companies are illegal, but you are going to make our own single-payer Medicare for all type system so good that you don't need them, that they go out of business. And sure, you can still have supplemental care if somebody wants a cosmetic procedure. If you want to get like a nose job or something that doesn't actually have anything to do with your personal health and well-being. You can have healthcare companies for instances like that, but by and large, if your goal is not to do away with the health insurance companies, you're just not serious about Medicare for All. Bernie's the one candidate. So if you support Medicare for All, if this is your number one issue, Bernie's got to be your guy. Now, I don't want to flip this about Bernie when it's supposed to be about Pramila Jayapal because by and large, um, what she did here was courageous. What AOC did here was also courageous, but she kind of led the charge here. But this does get to the point of if we truly do want Medicare for all, we've got to get people in the leadership who support it. Bernie Sanders obviously would be the person who would fight for it. Nancy Pelosi would not and has not been fighting for it. So, you know, if you want to get the policies, you've got to change people in the positions of power who just are trying to fight tooth and nail for these policies because, quite frankly, they're corrupt. They're corporate pawns, as Nancy Pelosi would say herself.
Well, in my district, they call me a corporate pawn uh, because my district is so progressive. Girly Mike Fettuccini needs your support on Patreon. What a loser. Visit patreon.com slash humanist report to support the low ratings humanist report. Sad. My views are much higher.